Got that rig running. Collecting data on the squid. Very excited about this. I've got my first sub. Ten minutes. Let's take a look. Oh. All right. Well, let's not panic. It's just um, it's just one ten minute sub. Uh, let's see how it looks after an hour. All right. Got an hour. We got it stacked. See um, how we're looking. I want to see that beautiful O3 squid? Huh. Wow. Okay. So, what are we going to do? This is going to be a bit. Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. This is James and tonight I'm going to reveal a project that I've been working on uh, for quite some time with a couple of other YouTubers. So the uh, Squid Nebula is a very faint target. Uh, it's an O3 target and it's within another st uh, structure called the Bat Nebula. And um, it's one of those faint targets where you need really dark skies or a lot of total integration time or both. And it is one that I've been wanting to shoot for a couple of years now. And um, kind of like what you saw in that little intro clip there, uh, I realized that I was going to need uh, perhaps more integration time than my skies were going to give me. I figured I was going to need about 100 hours uh, of total integration time. And at the time uh, that I was collecting the data on this, uh, the, the weather in my area has been very unstable. And um, the, the weather report was completely inaccurate because conditions changed constantly. And so I was very concerned after starting this uh, and being 10, 15 hours into it uh, that I wasn't going to have enough time to uh, get everything that I needed. And I also thought that this would have been a good opportunity to invite a couple other uh, YouTubers. And uh, I've worked with um, Astro Bloke, Glenn over at Astro Bloke and Joe uh, from Joe's Astro Photo on another project, on another dim target, uh, the Medulla Nebula. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to see if they were interested in um, joining me on this one. Now, as far as equipment goes, I was using my Astronomics uh, AT115 EDT uh, with a 0.8 reducer. Uh, so that's giving me a focal length of uh, 644 millimeters. And I'm using a micro four third sensor, the ASI 1600. Uh, Glenn, I believe, was using his 10 inch reflector with, uh, I think it was the uh, ASI 2600. And Joe was using his 80 millimeter William Optics scope. And um, I don't remember the camera he was using. That might have been the 2600 on that one also. And so the three of us combined, we got a total of 93 hours of total integration. So 29 hours of HA and 64 hours of O3. Now, between the three of us, I had the uh, tightest field of view. Um, and here's what my O3 looks like. Uh, Glenn's field of view was larger, but pretty close. And uh, Joe's was much wider. So I used mine as the, um, as the uh, reference to get them registered. And so we can see here, this is Joe's data registered to mine. So again, he had a much wider field, but... Uh, this is what he got. Uh, and here's Glenn's. So 
that came out pretty good and we'll take a quick look at HA All right so there's a decent amount of HA in this target and in fact that's one of the processing challenges that you'll see here is that it's very hard to differentiate the O3 from the HA and what I did is I just so I used PixInsight to register their data to my data and then I stacked the three uh, three the three copies of HA and three copies of O3 I just used Deep Sky Stacker and then I ran dynamic background extraction on the master frames and this is what we ended up with so this is the HA and yeah not stretch just just uh, DBE and then the auto stretch and here's the O3 so I mean you know 64 hours uh, I'm in a portal 5 I think Joe's in a portal 4 uh, and I think Len's in a portal 6 uh, although the UK you know they didn't have um, uh, very dark skies uh, the, the time of year that we were shooting but anyway uh, I mean we can clearly see the um, uh, the squid here so I thought we had some potential now I use the LRGB combination tool and I put HA in red and O3 and the green and blue channels and my first combination of that was this and so this was a little disconcerting because the HA is just so strong here and you can barely see the O3 and I tried various uh, uh, combinations. I tried uh, working with this to see if I could like use a mask, pull this out. Uh, and what I ended up doing is I went, let me pull it up here. What I ended up doing was for the red channel, for channel weights, I dialed it back to 50% and then I left the green and blue at a hundred percent and that result uh, gave me this so it it doesn't look too different but the O3 signal is stronger here and I felt like I would, would be able to work with this so ran dynamic background extraction on it again to pull a little bit more out uh, and then I removed the stars using star exterminator and ended up with this and uh, here are the stars one little neat uh, thing is that the ASI 1600 has that uh, all too familiar diffraction pattern the micro lensing pattern that you get on really bright stars and you can kind of see it here uh, but the um, diffraction spikes from Glenn's data actually did a, a really nice job of uh, concealing this. I had been playing with my own data before I got their data and I was trying to use a mask to de-emphasize this but with the diffraction spikes in there the, uh, from his, uh, from his uh, Newtonian uh, it, it did a nice job. I didn't have to do anything on that. Alright so let's move on Okay, so this is the one that I actually started to work on. And what you can see here is I've got a mask that I created. And you can see how this mask is isolating the, the uh, squid from the rest of the image. And the, I use these masks. What I do is I made a, a range mask and then I cleaned it up in Photoshop. That way I'm really doing a good job of giving the emphasis to what what to this O3 shell and you're going to see how I'm able to pull that out without impacting the rest of the image because I mean this is what I'm wanting this is what I'm wanting I'm wanting to pull out this and we got enough time that uh, you can even start to see some texture on the surface there And yeah, I'm just stepping through all the different work that I did. I think I'm still, yeah, still on there playing with curves. 
Now you can see some work going on in the background, right? So all I'm doing is just inverting the mask. And yeah, I wanted to kind of do an emphasis on that area down there. Uh, the texture here is really cool. Yeah, no, HA is uh, is interesting, especially in um, HOO images. I mean, you don't have to saturate, uh, increase saturation at all, because the red is so strong. In fact, I think I desaturated a little bit. Uh, so this is pretty much where I ended up at. Uh, next was the work on these stars, right? And of course, HOO... Uh, images the stars have this very strong greenish color from the O3 and so we just need to de-emphasize first I used um, morphological transformation uh, and then pulled back on curves a little bit uh, you can see I, I use the SCNR now to remove green right so now we're more blue less less teal then invert subtract green again this should give us some nice yellow stars in there yep and uh, that was pretty much it and then I just used uh, pixel math to put them back together and there's our final image yeah 93 hours on this guy with three fairly different telescopes all three different image scales so it's pretty interesting how you can use different telescopes of different sizes and they can all uh, be used to contribute to a single image so anyway it was a challenging target it was a fun target it was a pleasure as usual to uh, work with uh, Glenn and Joe um, I hope they had a good time working on this and um, that's all I got. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen either Joe or Glenn's YouTube channels, I'll have uh, links to their pages in the description. So definitely check that out. And um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe, especially if you're into astrophotography and if you're trying to learn PixInsight. Uh, and even if you're not using PixInsight, a lot of my, a lot of the work that I do in PixInsight, uh, the concepts carry over to other editing programs as well. So, with that, I say good night and clear skies.